I'm Dr. Benito Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is all about how to treat blackheads for skin of color. There are so many myths when it comes to blackheads. Um, is it acne? Is it dirt? Uh, should we be using a pore vacuum? There are so many mistakes that get made as well, which actually leads to more pigmentation and scarring, which can then last for years. And so this is why I thought this uh, video was quite important to make. Right, so today I'm going to be going through the skincare routine for blackheads, how to improve the appearance um, and reduce blackheads, and actually what is a blackhead? So if that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So first of all, what is a pore? A pore is basically an opening of the hair follicle to the skin. Now, when this is clogged with oil and dead skin cells, uh, it forms almost like a soup, and this soup can become oxidized. Once it becomes oxidized, it looks black. It's not dirt. It's basically oxidized oil and skin cells sitting in the pore. So the first product I would tell you to purchase is a salicylic acid. Uh, exfoliator because what salicylic acid does at 2% is that it is fat soluble so it goes into the pore deep into the pore and almost unclogs the pore it exfoliates all the dead skin gets rid of all that gunk um, and um, that's the the best way to basically get into a pore that is full of fat because actually anything that you put on that's water soluble isn't going to absorb so it's one of the best forms of penetration into the um, clogged pool to unclog it. I would start doing this every other night, not every day initially, and then titrate upwards. So for about three or four weeks, if your skin can tolerate every other night, then do it every night. Um, and that's the best way to handle that. I would say it'd be a mistake for you to squeeze at the skin. A lot of people try and do this, um, but actually it just leads to more hyperpigmentation and irritation of the skin. You can damage your skin barrier, lead to skin sensitivity. And then when you try and put salicylic acid onto a damaged skin barrier, it equals red skin. So let's avoid that. We want to be as gentle and effective as possible. Uh, the next thing I'd say is avoid benzoyl peroxide. Although it's a form of acne, but, um, blackheads, there is no proliferation of bacteria, so it's unnecessary to put benzoyl peroxide on it. You can do, and it might help, but it's not, the benefit isn't really worth how much irritation you're gonna get. I'd also recommend vitamin A creams, because what they do is they increase cell turnover, and so when you, with acne or blackheads, you basically have sticky skin cells that are forming this plug. What you want to do is increase cell turnover and so there's less sticking, sticky skin cells that have the opportunity to form that plug. So there are different vitamin A's and they're not all the same. They Some are more irritating but more effective and others are less irritating but also less effective. So I would start off with retinol palmitate because this is at least irritating uh, and then I'd step up to 0.5% retinol and then I would step up to retinaldehyde. Retinaldehyde is my absolute favorite. It's, it's the ingredient that I put in creams that I put on my own face because it's the least irritating but the most effective. However, it's extremely expensive and this is the reason why you don't find retinal, retinaldehyde in many products. Um, so even with the antioxidant serum that we're making for the Dr. Mita Rattan range, I chose to use retinol palmitate, which is the least irritating, but you can use it every day without any irritation. And it's at a, you know, decent price point of 18 pounds. Whereas if I put in retinaldehyde into that serum, you know, you're looking at a good 25 pounds, which might then make it very unaffordable for the majority. It would be really great um, for you guys to tell me actually, would you rather pay 25 pounds and have retinaldehyde in your antioxidant serum with your tetrahexyl decalascorbate vitamin C, your vitamin E uh, and your coenzyme Q10, or would you rather stick with retinol palmitate? So it'd be really great to get your feedback on that actually. The other mistake I've seen being made is people using skin brushes in order to try and exfoliate the the blackheads but um please avoid doing this because you, no brush is going to get into that fatty pore uh, without damaging the skin barrier so please avoid any facial brushes i'm just not a fan of facial brushes generally i've done a whole video on um cleansing tools for their face uh, which ones to use and which ones to avoid 
Okay, so let's go through the skincare routine and the Dr. V approved products that I would recommend. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored. Every product I recommend is evidence-based and that's very important so that you know that there's no bias with what I'm recommending. Okay, so my favorite products, uh, AM is different to PM. So in the morning, I would say use your salicylic acid wash. I like the inky list. Um, or you can use a salicylic acid toner and I like Paula's Choice or you can use salicylic acid serum um, which you can get from The Ordinary. So either one of those three depending on which one you prefer but I like salicylic acid. Uh, at night time you can use your vitamin A for example adapalene 0.1% is fat soluble so that's great to get into the pore to help unclog those sticky skin cells. Uh, the brand name for that is different. Um, so it's probably one of the most effective specifically for blackheads. Or you can try 0.025% tretinoin, but that is more irritating and you need a prescription for it in a lot of countries. For both forms of vitamin A, I would say use the sandwich method where you do moisturizer, vitamin A, then moisturizer because I do not want any irritation of the skin. So again, always look for a gel-based moisturizer. So I do like Face Theory Gel Moisturizer it's one of the few that are non-comedogenic, lightweight and hydrating and soothing to the skin. So I would recommend that. So the classic mistakes that I want you to avoid is I want you to not scrub your face. This is not how to exfoliate your skin for anybody, uh, but also when you're trying to deal with a pathology and you're using actives like salicylic acid, do not pick it, do not squeeze it. Although it's not inflammatory acne and a professional can extract it, I'd rather you went down the chemical route of gently unclogging the pore rather than anything that's too harsh to the skin, specifically for skin of color. Okay, next thing is please use a non-comedogenic moisturizer. Unfortunately, the vast majority of non-comedogenic moisturizers do contain comedogenic ingredients. So I've done a whole video for you on moisturizers that say they're non-comedogenic, but actually are comedogenic. And also I've done another video for you on the best non-comedogenic moisturizers for skin of color. So please do head over and watch that because you will be surprised. Unfortunately, a lot of the labels, things that are put on labels of skincare um, are unregulated. Uh, so I've done a whole video for you on unregulated skincare too, in terms too, to help you with that one. Uh, the next thing I'd say is makeup. Makeup is really one place it can all go wrong. You can have great skincare and then suddenly you put on your foundation, which is clogging your pores, and then, you know, wondering why the salicylic acid isn't working. Your makeup, I would say, please try and avoid if you can. Um, this is what I would do on a non-makeup day is wear my sunscreen. I wear my Inzincable SPF 50 and it basically um, gives me this dewy look. So I'm wearing makeup now, but um, when I don't, it just gives me a dewy look and I don't have to put on any other foundation on top of it. So pick a, found, I pick a moisturizer and sunscreen that basically you are happy with and you don't need to clog the pores. Just try and avoid it. And I know it's hard, it's easier to say than do especially when you're trying to cover something, but it's just like a vicious cycle then, you know? If you have any other skin conditions, for example, you've got eczema or you've got rosacea, treat those things first before you deal with the blackheads because actually treating the blackheads can make those conditions worse and they're more serious um, and have longer term effects on your skin than the temporary blackheads. So that's the order in which I would do it. Avoid steaming. I don't know where this idea came from that steaming your skin was going to remove blackheads because all it does, imagine your, your pore is fat soluble. Now steam is water. How is water gonna get into a fat soluble space? It just isn't. All you're gonna do is actually dehydrate the skin. It can lead to dermatitis and irritation of the skin. Um, and actually any pathology that's happening, if you've got eczema, if you've got anything else, it just gets worse than steam. Steam is actually a bit of a gimmick. It's one of those things that instantly you think something's happening because your skin looks flush, but actually the reason your skin is looking flush is because your capillaries are wide open, they're dilated, there's inflammation taking place, and that tightness you're feeling is not a good thing. Um, but because you feel like something is happening, you feel like something is working, and it's unfortunately, um, this is what these big cosmetic companies rely on is you feeling like something is happening instantly and 
you know, it may not be a good thing that's happening to the skin. And the one big thing that is all over TikTok right now are pore vacuums. So please, can we avoid those? Again, it's one of those satisfying things. You feel like something is happening, but actually the amount of trauma you're doing to skin of color leads to hyperpigmentation. And I've seen people come in with this being the issue. So pore vacuums are just such a no-no, specifically for skin of color. Don't forget, I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video. So do hit that notification bell so you're here to ask me those questions. Please follow me on Instagram to see all the behind the scenes questions. And that's, I've got two accounts, Skincare by Dr. V and Dr. Nita Ratan. Please follow me on TikTok to learn quick snippets of information that you just want in 15 second chunks. So that's Dr. Vanita Ratan. You can download your free guide for Skin of Color down below. And we have a huge announcement coming on the 9th of November that's going to revolutionize skincare for Skin of Color forever for us, for our children. And I cannot wait to announce it. I've been keeping this a secret for a whole year now. And you know how I like to tell you every tiny little detail of what's going on in my life. Um, <clears throat> this one, this one killed me to keep secret from you so i finally get to tell you what it is on the 9th of november and i hope you're as happy and as excited about it as i am thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye